Do we have that? Because we want to make sure we get this recorded. So this morning, Carlos called me a narcissist, <laughs> and now, <laughs> <laughs> so now we've opened it up to the entire audience, and everybody else seems to have joined in with that, right? <laughs> I just said you were going through hot. I don't even see. Uh, yeah, <laughs> menopause is that what you said? <laughs> Oh my God. So if there's anybody remotely, James Stone, for example, I'm surprised you're not saying anything. <laughs> he's on mute. He's, he's on mute. Oh, yeah. Good morning. Good morning, James. How are you? So we do have our guest speaker, uh, Tony Breed with Orange County Realtors, but a couple of things that have questions have come about. And finally, as of the 18th of July, we are finally giving guidance with regards to open houses. So the question is going to be, do you have to really let somebody in? You don't have to, but it's recommended. There are four different forms. There's an open house advisory. There's a uh, another, the BRBC, the buyer representation, buyer compensation agreement, which is for a duration of up to three months. That could be non-exclusive or exclusive. And then there's another form of PS, where is it? Yes, P.S. All right. Thank you, Tony. The property showing a representation agreement. And that's limited for up to three properties for a period of 30 days. But if someone theoretically can issue a cancellation, but you're still protected if you fill in the form properly by saying if you buy any of these homes within so many days following the expiration, I'm entitled to be paid. And then the buyer non-agency agreement. So the form that's really recommended is the OHNA, which is the Open House Visitor Non-Agency Disclosure. It's really a sign-in sheet. That's what it is. So I think it's reasonable. And Carr or NAR is recommending that every adult sign that form. And I think, and of course, they're saying, if you're not a buyer, you don't have to sign the form. But how do you know out of anybody within that party? And we're always trying to get everybody's contact information. So have all of the adults this is my recommendation, sign in. Because it also indicates on that form, you are not representing them. In addition to that, any information you provide them is on behalf of the seller. So you're not creating any type of an agency relationship. And Carr goes to the extent of saying that if they refuse to sign the sign-in form and you allow them in the property, you probably shouldn't be doing anything more than giving them a property information flyer because any other information you provide them could imply that you created an agency relationship. So right now, this practice, the forms go into effect tomorrow, correct? Yes. They'll be so we're gonna have different things that are no longer be available to us that currently are like the cooperating broker commission form. There's no longer going to be that documentation. Remember, we never used, we weren't required to use the so-called cooperating mm -hmm. broker commission form. It's a contract between offices in terms of payment of commission if compensation was offered on the multiple listing service that's no longer going to be there as of august 13th so the forms are changing the offer of compensation to a buyer's broker is still going to be on the mls at this point in time until august 13th and then once that time frame lapses no longer will there be an offer of compensation and remember that was a contractual offer of compensation you could change it using the CBC, but now they have eliminated that completely from the forms library. They don't want negotiations theoretically taking place between brokers. They want the seller to pay the buyer's commission. That's really the direction everything is going in. So everything we're talking about right now, it's just a, a, a practice change. But as of January 1st, California law is also going to be codifying all of the changes that we're experiencing right now. So it's not going to be just a violation associated with the with association of realtors. It's going to be a violation of the law. So that's going to be something we have to keep in mind. Nobody wants to lose their license. Nobody wants to be thrown in jail. And you know they're going to be looking for somebody that violates the law so they can make an example of them because we're all terrible people. Rich, was there any more information on agents advertising commission, buyer's commission? You can still advertise commissions. You can still offer compensation on any type of a website. It just can't be an MLS site. So it makes me wonder if there's going to be a separate site created for an offer of compensation or a brokerage's website theoretically could offer compensation also. And then the other, the other change, remember that's taking place on the 13th of August will be the fact that there's going to be a concession field added to the MLS. 
It is non-binding on the new residential listing agreement, which has a separate addendum attached to it. It refers to concessions, right? And apparently there's only going to be a checkbox. Would you consider offering a concession to a buyer? And those concessions can be used to pay the buyer's broker's commissions, for example, or closing costs. And that concession field is going to be, you're going to have the ability to offer a dollar amount or a percentage, but it's non-binding. So if you negotiate concessions on behalf of a buyer, you must have that in the contract itself. Some of this is repetitive, but I think it's important that we continue to go over this. You're going to add something to yeah, that? Yeah, the MLS A form uh, that asks about concession has no dollar amount or percentage field. So there is no amount uh, asked of the seller of what they would consider, just a simple yes, no. So now as for MLS, I don't know what that would pertain to, but um, how those fields are going to relate. But I would say just a simple yes, no, and let the buyer ask an amount, um, which I think NAR is or CAR is recommending. Okay. Right. And then one other thing, all these forms have changed dramatically, as a matter of fact, in the last week or two. But the other thing we can probably expect to change on the forms once again, because the Department of Justice has opened an investigation into the release of these forms, which they claim to be too difficult for the average consumer to understand. So that's probably going to be another change that will be taking place at some time in the future. Yeah. <laughs> They're not investigating the fact that we have a million forms that they have to fill out. Oh, yeah, a million forms, exactly, yeah. <laughs> and because it's all man mandated by law. Oh, that's what complicates the yeah. situation, right? So that's something else we can expect more change, but I think uh, we'll try to keep you a surprise as much as possible. So Tony, Tony Breed, our expert from Orange County Realtors. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> thank you for coming today. Please take the floor. All right, well, good morning, everybody. Um, nice to see a lot of familiar faces, some brand new faces here. Uh, quick introduction, my name is Anthony. I work at Orange County Realtors, just a little ways from y'all. Been there now almost 22 years. I am your trainer. So Carlos and Richard have me out here each and every month to give you training on all your tools and products. So not only do I train on MLS, but I also train on zip forms and tech. I love showing you all your technology tools. Um, yes, lots of changes come tomorrow. Your contracts are being updated in zip forms automatically. So all your libraries will have all that stuff. CAR at car.org is offering trainings starting tomorrow on the new contract. So I would definitely recommend going there. So if you go to car.org real quickly, and I'll just share my screen. Here at car.org, you've got the agent sitting on the house, which I just love. We are going to come over to where it says Transaction Center. When we click on Transaction Center, we're going to go to where it says Standard Forms. Here we're going to then probably be asked by CAR to log into our CAR account. For zip forms and then what you're going to do from here is that you're going to scroll down and click on where it says NAR settlement related forms <clears throat> here you're going to be able to access all their print regarding the BRBC five things to know about the uh, new broker compensation advisory form the BCA which is highly detailed for both the seller and the buyer and of course how compensation works out amongst the parties, uh, the scope of representation, which Richard also has a copy of, which I know he's gonna probably give that a copy to you all. And of course, open houses, how to handle open houses and a quick Q and A. From here, you can access all their training classes. They've got eight scheduled so far between July 24th and August 15th. Simply click on register and they'll start to go over the forms. Now, what forms are gonna go over? I don't know, but I would assume at least the BRBC and the RLA. If you haven't seen what the new forms look like just yet, at the very top where it says forms, click on forms. And now you'll get a list of the entire 30 forms that are being released tomorrow. Now on June 18th last month, they pulled 21 of those forms. And because of the DOJ review, they said, okay, here's 30 coming out tomorrow. So they've increased your form count by nine. If you click on the here, 
you'll be able to look at all the drafts of all the forms that are being released tomorrow. So look at that BRBC, look at that, um, the modification to the BRBC and the listing agreement. The listing agreement's a big one here. So if you have a current active listing in the MLS, you'll probably need to actually modify to the current standards. Um, you also have access to the RLA, the OHNA, the PRSA, all this fun stuff. So definitely take a look at that, by the way. One thing that agents were asking about, well, do I need to do a BRBC for a tenant, even though they're not a buyer? Well, guess what? One of your new 30 forms is called a TRBC, Tenant Representation Buyer Compensation or Broker Compensation Agreement. So yes, you are now needing to negotiate your compensation with any and all clients. So just to give you a heads up, I know Richard's got a whole plan of classes scheduled for you all, right? Ahead, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I have to mention something about the uh, the listing, the modifications to the listing contract, if that's very important. Mm -hmm. So if you have an existing listing contract and that listing contract has an offer of compensation to the cooperating broker, so remember the li existing listing contract says 5% and how much you want to offer to the cooperating broker. If you have filled in those fields, as of August 13th, because the offer of compensation will be eliminated from the multiple listing service, you're going to have to modify that contract and notify them that that field has been eliminated. And the choices are, you can pay me as your wonderful agent, or we just remove that from the contract. So if you have existing listing contracts, which are offering compensation, it's specified in that listing agreement, you're going to have to modify that contract as of August 13th. And if we don't, we don't have to bother. <laughs> I kind of like your attitude, right? <laughs> I don't, but the point is now the seller is going to be contacting her. Maybe if they're, it's surprising that more sellers are aware of the settlement than I expected. How much information they have, that's another issue, right? Because they're not involved in it, living it every single day, but they are aware of the settlement. So I think it's wise to do that and maybe have this. If they're willing to offer that compensation right now, there might be those sellers say, I don't have to pay the buyer's broker any longer. But we all know that it's going to be an incentive for anybody, especially the buyer. I think that's the whole presentation. It's not the agent, because the buyer has an obligation to pay the buyer's agent. And if they have to pay, guess what, Mr. Seller? They're going to offer you less anyways. Or they're, I think in 99% in of the cases, maybe the 100 I think every single buyer that submits an offer is going to request that the seller pay the buyer's broker. I think that's going to be happening every single time. Yeah. There's re no reason not to. And you never know. It could yeah. be because of off, uh, above asking price. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Sorry, Tony. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, no, no, no. Not at all. So I think that's a really good thing. I know a lot of people go, well, they're going to offer less. Not necessarily. They could give the the seller a little bit in, of an incentive, say Richard lists his house for a million, but Carlos who's representing the buyer and the buyer makes an offer at say 1.2 million with a request of buyer or seller paying the buyer agent compensation of say, you know, $40,000, right? Now all of a sudden the seller is walking away with an extra amount of equity as an incentive. So, those beautiful negotiating tactics that you all have learned and personify are gonna be put into play. So I think you all have some opportunities here to work on your negotiation skills. Anybody love negotiating? One sure. person, excellent. <laughs> Why are you in real estate? Real estate's all about negotiation. So I don't know. All right, so let's dive into the big part of the class. Why I'm really here. Um, Realtor Property Resource, RPR. Now, we I know we've had a class on the basics of creating CMAs using RPR, accessing uh, tax data information on listed and unlisted properties. This is your free C, uh, NAR member benefit tool or included member benefit tool to be able to access this type of data in more than 66 million properties for both residential and commercial real estate, right? Anybody using RPR right now? 
Yes, sometimes. Two people, three, three people. people. Excellent. That's not bad. Not bad. Could be better, but here, here we go. So you all have been through my AI class, yes? Yes. Yes, yes excellent. How many of you used the um the prospecting prompts that we went over in our last AI class? Anybody? Not a single person here. Okay, great. Because that would probably go in line with one person marketing. Excellent. That's honesty, though. <laughs> That's honest. I can respect honesty. Okay, so you're not using ChatGPT or AI necessarily to help you with your marketing. Coming up with a year's worth of content for one city in less than 30, min 30 minutes to hit all of your different social media platforms, blog postings, you know, so far, so on and so forth. Yada, 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 right? Because today is National Yada Yada Day. So, how can I use RPR? Because you know what? One of the biggest things that we need to look at is trying to prospect for clients, right? To list is to last is what I hear. But more importantly, think of yourselves as the shoe store, right? You've got two business models in your shoe store. I can bring buyers into my shoe store where I can take them to another store because I have no inventory and let them buy from somebody else's store. Anybody do that now? You kind of do if you're only working with buyers and you have no listings. But our second business model is I want them to come to my shoe store, buy the shoes that I have. All I need to do is replenish my inventory. Right? So if we are looking at increasing our inventory each and every month, we need to promise ourselves to get at least one listing a month in our marketing, right? Because in our business, it's not all necessarily always be closing, it's always doing our work. So how do we help out with that? Well, this is where RPR can help you, okay? Now, one of the many things I love about RPR, and again, once you join as a member, if you're brand new, you're gonna get what they call an NRDS number, a National Real Estate Data Systems number, and you'll also get a user ID for the MLS. So if we go into the MLS system, log into our account. And of course, put in the wrong user ID because I have too many on my brain. All right. There you go. When I'm logged into the matrix MLS system, I can then immediately come over to the links tab where I can access all of my third-party member benefit tools offered to me by CRMLS, CAR, NAR, and of course, Orange County Realtors. As I scroll through this list, I'm gonna find the choice that says Realtor Property Resource. There, I'm gonna create a username and password. But now what I can do here is I can access some amazing information, okay? Now, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use this for prospecting. Okay, how can we use this for prospecting? What I can do is first and foremost, do a map search. Now, instead of looking for listed properties here, I'm going to look for public record data, so unlisted properties, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do in this map search because I know the neighborhood that I'm marketing in, I'm just gonna simply draw around my market area using my map tool. Now from here, when I hit search this area, I'm now gonna pull up all these properties that are currently not listed in my neighborhood. So, so far I've got 392 properties in my neighborhood that I now need to door knock. Does it automatically remove anything that's listed? Yes, because when I went to public records, you'll notice that there were some that were listed. This will remove all that are not listed. Or, yeah, this removes all that are not listed. So here I get to see all the non-listed properties off market. Now, what I can do with this immediately, one of our many marketing things or strategies is what? Mail marketing, right? I still believe in traditional marketing, okay? Even though payoff for traditional marketing is anywhere from 9 to 12 months of postcards, flyers, updates, things like that, right? We've got to be able to do these things. And I know here at Coldwell Banker, they have an amazing marketing team to help you with that. Right, Carlos? Right. 
Excellent. So, but I want to help streamline our marketing team here. So how do I do this with this neighborhood? Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to where it says mailing labels at the top right corner of the screen. Now, when I click on mailing labels, like real estate tax records, here with CR or RPR, I can create up to 2,000 mailing labels each and every month at no cost to me. Now, if we think about this, using this for prospecting, and we have access to realist tax records, which is a CRMLS benefit, which by the way, CRMLS, if I outline the same neighborhood, I can, or other neighborhoods, I can create up to 5,000 mailing labels each and every month. So between these two systems, I can have at least 7,000 mailing labels each and every month created. I still have to pay for the labels. Well, you just pay, I can just pay for the, the transfer sheet, sure, the stickers. That's not hard. That's probably what, $10 out of it all, if that. But we've got some nice cool things that we can do here, first and foremost. Number one, I can pick the Avery mailing label template to want to use in my printer. Okay. Number two, do I want it in customizing the address? Do I want to send it to the property or the tax bill address? What would be sending, what would be the benefit of sending something to the tax bill address? Anybody? You're hitting the owner of the property. Investor. The investor clients, right? Investor clients aren't necessarily living at the property, but they're getting their, their fees at their tax bill, right? So here I'm going to send this to their tax bill address. By the way, one other nice thing about this is that if I wanted to, I can also eliminate any duplicates. So if I have an investor that owns multiple homes, I don't want to send multiple things to their address. So I'm going to eliminate any duplicates. So here out of 392 properties, we've dropped down to 361. Excuse me. And down below under the filters, by the way, you can see what the mailing label kind of looks like. I can send it to the owner's name, owner slash current resident or current resident. Underneath that, I've got some really cool choices. And let's zoom in here so the audience can see. Under the filters, occupancy type. I can say I want both owner occupied and absentee. But when it, what happens if Richard has a whole investor marketing plan. He wants to talk to investors. Wouldn't it be great to just see out of those 361 people, how many people were just absentee owners? Yes. So I'm just gonna select absentee and hopefully we will see here out of 361, 73 people are investors. That's a big percentage. That's a big percentage out of my neighborhood. Right, because now when I'm knocking on those doors, maybe I also have that meant that mental remembrance of giving them something about the benefits of owning versus renting. So when I actually door knock these homes, I'm going to appeal to my mark my target marketed audience of the renter. Right, because today's renter is tomorrow's buyer, hopefully. So if you want to go door knocking and you want to knock on the renter's homes, it will give us the address. Or it will. So we can have that all, all together. So what I can now do is find out which homes here these people own, mm -hmm. right? Because then at that point I could switch things around and I can go, all right, I want absentee owners, but I want the property address instead. And then I'll, out of these 73 homes, I'm now going to get their, that property address. A big opportunity for all those renters here. Exactly. Because what what's that? 73, that's almost a full percent. That's huge. That's huge for, for a 361 oh, yeah. unit neighborhood. Now at this point, we could just simply hit print. And now I've got my Avery mailing label template up. So I see here in uh people of San Clemente, Encino. Highland, California, San Diego, Mission Viejo. So now I get the absentee owners. Now, what can I do with this? I just sit, can now stick my Avery mailing, uh, Avery stickers in the printer, print this out. But wait, there's more. Do I want to have to recreate this over and over again? The answer is no. Download it, print it, 
maybe even give it to my EDM, my electronic mail or e EMD, my electronic mail distribution team here at Coldwell. Hey, Carlos, here's a list of people that I wanted you to send this postcard to. Does this make Carlos's life a lot easier and his marketing team's life a lot easier? Heck yeah. They don't have to find the, the people for you. You've already found that for them. And we did that in what, less than five minutes? Now, how many of you have CRMs, contact retention management systems? One person, I should. I think everybody should have one, right? Yeah. Through Coldwell? KV Core, right? Is it KV Core? No. No, Moxie Engage. Moxie Engage. Yeah. Well, I know Moxie Engage, I think, has AI in it, right? It doesn't. It no. doesn't yet. There you go. There you go. Not yet, but yeah. one person out of everybody has a contact management system. How do you all track your clients? How do you track what you've been doing or what you did do? It's all about retain, retaining, right? Wouldn't it be great to all of a sudden get their information, these people's information, apply action plans, things like that? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this list. I'm going to send it over to my title rep or whoever I can get to give me phone numbers and email addresses. But instead of writing it on a sheet of paper, instead what I'm going to do for that same 2000 a month, and I mean 2000 mailing labels per month, right? I'm going to create, instead of the PDF document, I'm going to create a CSV Excel spreadsheet file. Now in the Excel spreadsheet, I'm going to add two columns next to everybody's names, phone numbers, email addresses. Then I'm going to send out to my, say, title rep, can you give me the following people's phone numbers and email addresses and maybe even social media platforms? What do you charge? Now, all of a sudden, I get that list back. I can now take that Excel spreadsheet, import it into my CRM, my contact retention management system. And now if I have action plans geared towards investors, I can now apply that to these clients. How would you use it for social media platforms? Because I don't, I don't have a grasp of that. Uh, so what I would do is, well, they should be able to, because of all the data collection, it, a lot of times they can look at people's, okay. when they do a Google search, you'll see if they're on like Facebook, Twitter, okay, so Instagram. How do you, then how do you implement that in your marketing? I'm just curious. So what I would do is I would add a plan where I could reach out and friend them mm -hmm. or follow them. And then once I friend them, follow them, now all of a sudden maybe we we add plans like reach out to them as a direct message. Direct messages. Right, direct message mm -hmm. this person or that person or, or set up a targeted ad on say Facebook to direct it to hopefully those people as well. Uh, because I think you can send it out to mass marketing or direct marketing through Facebook business page. So I would definitely take a look at that. So there are ways of doing it. Cost effective. It'll be a lot more cost effective. Another way to get in front of them. Another way to get in front of them. Maybe they reach out to you if you're direct messaging them. If you have emails, maybe now all of a sudden you do a video email message of some sort, introducing yourself to them. And now all of a sudden, maybe they look you up on your social media and friend you. So and like you. you think I can uh, have you conduct a class on something like that, how to go through that? I can try. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can try. You always say yes. That's good. I, I always say yes. Doesn't mean I always am able to do it because I don't use my Facebook in that way just uh -huh. yet, but I'm growing it. I'm growing it's it. It's going to help your life. It, it, yeah, yeah, it will. It will, amongst other things. So, but this is how you could use this, right? So we can prospect into the traditional sense of getting their information to ready to send out mail marketing, social media posts, things like that. Now, we have some other things that we can do here with these clients, okay? Maybe I wanna talk about maybe what's going on in the general neighborhood, wanna get some market updates, right? Because one of the biggest things that makes or needs needs to happen for us to stand out in our crowd is knowing our market. How many of you actually know the market right now? One person, two people, eh, maybe. So real quick question, is a seller's or buyer's market? 
here in our market. Still seller's market, right? Have prices gone up, down, or gone level? Up, up level, up. down. Excellent. Everybody's experiencing a little bit of something, right? I OC fast stats. OC fast stats, yeah, info fantastic. sparks, and RPR. So we can pull up a property that may be not listed. I love this too, by the way. What I love about some of this stuff, because maybe you now narrow the homes down to be absentee owners. What you could do here is actually what I love about this system with looking at an off-market property that's public record. We got to actually see what the property was bought for the last time it was marketed. So in this case, this property was bought back in 1996 for $190,000. Today, it's an estimated value is at 1.6 million. That's as of July 20, or 14, 2024. So if I'm knocking this neighborhood, what's probably one of the biggest things I'm going to talk about with people, their equity, right? Because a lot of times, <laughs> if you bought your home, what, 40 years ago, and that's the same owner from 40 years ago, do you think that they've kept track of their home value? Probably not, right? They kind of tend to forget these things. And somebody who's owned their home for, say, 40 or more years probably is what? An empty nester. Maybe their goals need to, I need to downsize because this is just too much house. And my spouse and I have just migrated downstairs in the living room because we're too tired and our hips hurt too much to walk up and down the stairs. Anybody have those types of clients? Right? We talk about these things. Right? Right? but we can look at this stuff now. Oh, and one thing I did forget here, if I go back, let me see if I can pull this back up again. Back under the more filters here, next to public record, what I can also do, if I go under more filters, one of the filters I love in one of our search criteria is ownership time. I can actually narrow down this list further to say, Target people that have owned their home for say 15 or more years or 10 or more years. What's what's the advantage of something like that in more our target market? Sell. What was that? More likely to sell. More than likely to sell. Maybe there's more equity, not as big loans, things like that. So if somebody's owned their home for 15 or more years, they probably have more equity versus somebody who just bought their home anywhere between now and 10 years. Right, even though they've gained a lot of equity in 10 years, not as much as say somebody that's owned their home for 20, as we just saw. So, can we set up a template based on once we come to the criteria we're happy with? Mm -hmm. Can we set up a template such that we find it maybe once a month with having to go through all of these selections? I do believe there is a choice after you put in your criteria, there is a save search button. Uh, let's see, update search. Where's my save yeah, search? search I see update. Probably towards the end once you're done with the search. Yeah. Uh, actually, let me click on the part up there on save next to the filter. Oh, there it is. Yeah. There you go. Save. Thank you. Okay. So save your search. So maybe you would now name it map search for this area or map search for whatever. Thank you very much. Thanks for seeing that for me, even though I'm wearing glasses. So now I can make my own save search, save it, and then reference it. Now I can go and create another search. So if I'm marketing neighborhoods, maybe I'm pulling up 70 homes here. Then I go and look at another neighborhood, put up another 25 homes, all investors. Now I've added to my pool of clients, right? They're not just buyers and sellers, not just residential homeowners, but now we're talking about passive income property owners. And by the way, I can do this for both residential and commercial real estate, okay? Which is huge. Now, if I pull up a property, besides looking at those details about that home, at the top here, we also have some other choices. One called market trends. Now I can do this market trend specifically in and around this home or if I go over to where it says marketing or research at the top, there is a choice here called residential market trends. Now, when I click on residential market trends, I can now put in a county, city, zip code, or neighborhood information. So like 
as an example, I'm going to type in Irvine, California. And now we're going to see some amazing information about what's happening in Irvine, California in the past 90 days. So first, we can switch this from single family condo to maybe something more direct of what I actually market. So anybody want to pick a choice? Single family, condo, co-op, mobile manufactured, land lot, farmland, or both? Huh? Single, single family. family. Excellent. So in the single family market, we see here that we are currently in a seller's market <clears throat> with at least 1.84 months worth of inventory. By the way, here's one that sellers love to hear. Homeowners who are listing their homes in the MLS are getting 3.1% more of their asking price. Right? Not too bad for a seller. Also, buyers, stop lowballing all the offers because you saw something in the news yesterday or read in the newspaper that it's a super buyer's market, right? Well, reality is, is based on the MLS, homeowners are getting more than they're asking. If you want to be in the game, you got to up your offers. If you really want that home, you're going to need to come up with your offer. By the way, eventually, maybe we need to talk about asking for concessions and things like that, right? By the way, it'll take sellers eight days to get into the escrow. That's it. That's it. At a median sales price of 2.3. Crazy. Now I know Richard has got his Swiss bank account. He won the lotto last week because it was on the news. I'm still That's piddling. <laughs> it's supposed to be a secret. It's supposed to be a secret. <laughs> I'm not, right? I'm right? my name to be published with that lottery. There you go. All right. So, but here you've got some other interesting information. So I'll call it content, right? So find out new listings for sale in the MLS as of June, 2.4 million, 118 properties down 13.2% from month over month, medium price per square foot, total sales volume, and of course, living area square footage, uh, median, active listings, 2.7, 143 properties, 25 days on the market. And then of course, we go into our pending sales and of course, our sold listings. Now, what I like about the sold listings, sold in the MLS versus sold that was not in the MLS. So we see here, that listings being sold in the MLS, there were 85 of them in the month of June, sold at 2.3 million. Sellers got 3% more than their asking price. Again, it took them eight days to get into uh, escrow. Whereas a homeowner, maybe for sale by owner, they're getting only 2.1. So what's a nice marketing strategy to somebody who's really innovative about wanting to be a for sale by owner or not list their property in the MLS publicly. You're leaving about what? 200,000 200, on the table? What could you, young lady, do with $200,000 extra equity in your life? Save. Save. Excellent. Fill her gas tank. Fill her gas tank for at least a year. <laughs> Maybe pay off some utilities, right? By the way, there were only 42. So almost half of your market is not listed in the MLS. They think that they know it better than you. This is where we need to show our value, right? So we've got stuff like this. Now, how can we use this stuff? How can I come up with content? Anybody here a great content generator? And what I mean by great, you can come up with content right now. Not a single person, right? Single person. Now, I know this is where we're gonna have a little fun with RPR and AI. Now, I love the fact that only three of you only raise your hands by using AI, right? ChatGPT, how can I use something like this? But wait, we don't have to go to ChatGPT. As a matter of fact, here with RPR, Realtor Property Resource, there's a little button here that says Create Script. What I can now do is use RPR's AI platform to actually create some content for me based on the current market trends. Yeah. Now, we're going to first create, create a tone for our clients or potential clients. So, Carlos, do you want to be professional, engaging, or conversational? 
Engaging. You want to be engaging. Excellent. And then young lady, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Monique. Monique, do you want to deal with buyers and sellers or just buyers or sellers in our little script here? Buyers and sellers. Buyers and sellers. Excellent. So now with that, we're now going to first analyze the analytics as a blog. Now in five, four, three, two, one, the system has now just generated a blog content that's got my branding in it. Why? Because I am logged into my account. But here it's taken all these charts and graphs and created a beautiful little blog post. Now, what I, can I do with this? I can either send this just as it is by email to my email list, or maybe I copy this, go into ChatGPT and say, please rewrite to make shorter, to make longer, to make it understandable for a high school student, to have the tone of Elvis Presley, flamboyant. flamboyant, fun, right? I can now rewrite it to make it my own. And I can do this each and every month, right? Because I want to be able to put out content quickly and easily. And again, this just took us, what, just a couple of seconds? It's because Tony's doing it. Just because I'm doing it. <laughs> Trust me, it, it took me a little bit. <laughs> I'm, I work faster now than I did before. Here, right? We want to be as skilled as you are, Tony. Right? Exactly. You will. You will. Now, we also have a choice here to create a social media post. So now what I can do is come over here, click on social media campaign. And now what I love about this with RPR is that it rewrites this and it now puts in all the emojis for our social media blog. Now, maybe I go in to ChatGPT, <laughs> and if I'm I pay for ChatGPT, I'm not an emoji person. If you're not an emoji person, then take out the emoji when you replace it. it. You need to delete it manually, it or I just change it. Please take out, you know, copy you it. Just, you can say that, okay? Yep, copy it, put it in ChatGPT. Please rewrite, take out all the emojis. Wow. Or I put it in there and say, please create an Instagram picture that fits this post, and put this in quotes. Now, all of a sudden, if I pay for ChatGPT, that's AI image creation platform will now create an image and maybe even put in some hashtags. I think this in, even includes some of the hashtags in here. So we can have a little bit more fun with this. Upload your own picture. Upload my own picture, reference this, whatever. But now, video. 98.9% .9 of content today is absorbed visually as well as auditorially. So we need to do video more than ever, right? But how many of you love being on camera? Or even better yet, how many of you just scratch your heads going, I just, I have an idea of how to put the video together, but I don't know what to say. And I just can't picture what I need in my outline. There it is. Over here, we can now create a video script. <laughs> so when I click on create a video script, now, all of a sudden, <clears throat> opening shot with Anthony Breed standing in front of a beautiful Irvine, California landscape. Hello, everyone. I'm Anthony Breed, your friendly neighborhood realtor here in Irvine, California. Today, I'm excited to bring you a market update for June 2024. Boom. I've now got my script of what to say. It tells me what shots I should fade in and fade out during my video. So now, all of a sudden, I have AI helping me direct me and create my video content. So I've now got three bits of content that the system has now automatically set up for me that I can do. If I can now get people to notice me on social media, on my YouTube or real, maybe I copy this and create, go to ChatGPT, please shorten the script to a Instagram reel or a TikTok video. It's gonna help you format it and shorten and take out anything that you don't need, right? Because I think what reels are less than a minute, which is kind of tough when you're talking about the market, but just know that you could. Now, anybody like that? Yeah, yes. Excellent. Yeah. Now the next thing, how can I create content? Anybody here hear of Canva? Yes. What's Canva, Carlos? It's a design website where you can 
use their templates they have for postcards, flyers, social media posts. It's a designing tool that you can use. Canva.com. Now, Canva.com has a paid service, right? <laughs> I do believe their paid service yearly is about $112 a year. It's kind of great. It's neat. You can apply all these tools. By the way, Canva does have its own AI platform built into it, but it's an all-in-one shop, right? Now, wouldn't it be great for those of you who haven't used Canva before to have something developed for you that you can quickly and easily use to use content? from RPR. Anybody would like that? Good. By the way, I'm going to expect everybody next month to have raised their hand saying that they've been doing this, right? <laughs> well, fun enough, RPR has gone out of its way to develop templates in Canva that you can use to help you market to market stats. If I come over to where it says learn and click, a drop-down menu appears and now all of a sudden, not only can I get training videos on the market trends, script writer, the shareable market trends, things like that, but we have a button here that says Canva templates. If I click on the Canva templates button, I'm gonna be redirected back to RPR, or NARRPR.com's website. And now I've got different templates that I can access. As a matter of fact, looking at all of them, I can see here very quickly and easily all the various preset templates that I can use and modify in my life. By the way, I love this one, an open house sign-in sheet. Gotta love that. Who doesn't like something that's that? Or a newsletter, some formats, and of course some awesome graphics here. All free for you. So if I wanted to use one of these, all I need to do is simply click on one of the templates. Canva is now going to open up here. When I say I want to use this template in Canva in my design. And now we've got everything here that I can start to begin to modify. I can put in my phone numbers, email address, my personal website. But now I need to get these pictures changed around, right? What I can now do is simply come back into RPR. And then when I click on say a chart, I think there's a share choice here. Oh, by the way, I can share this chart to my Facebook, my Twitter account, or what is it called now? X, LinkedIn or more. I can copy this or download this as a JPEG or picture file. But here just super, super quickly, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to Make a quick picture. Jump back over into my Canva. And now I'm just going to right click and paste. Whoops. Come on. Come on. Why can't you let me paste it? What I should be able to do is either upload or right click and paste that chart. Come on, oh, come on, page is locked. What do you mean it's locked? Gosh darn it, why not? Yeah, I was just think it was me operating a computer. <laughs> right, right? Well, if- so You can see there's a lot. There, there's a little bit here. I shouldn't have that locked. I don't know why it is, but what I should be able to do is simply grab the chart paste it right on in so I can just follow it, drag it right on in and do what I need to to modify this. Maybe I write a little blog post, whatever. Now all of a sudden I save it as an image. I then, if I'm paying for the system, go over to share and put this to my social media platforms, right? With my own branded content, my own pictures, my own style. <laughs> Anybody like this? So now, what was that? I think it was over 20 templates that I can have content displayed. So not only can I create scripts and blog posts and everything like that, but now I can create newsletters and flyers and postcards and everything else for free.
Who doesn't like that? Well, I should say, when it comes to printing a postcard or printing a flyer, there may be a cause. But for Canva, you used to, for, for Canva, flyer, this is you do not need the membership to do that. No, nope, everything I, I'm doing here is all on the free account. Okay. The benefits of the of the paid is I can create my own brand, right? So if you have your own um, uh, graphic of your business coupled with Coldwell Bankers, put it in as a brand. You can actually create templates. So now all of a sudden you can put multiple contents together and then all of a sudden have multiple flyers. Now with the share button for that $112 a year, I schedule all those flyers to go out or each flyer to go out on that social media platform on a set day at a set time. Now all of a sudden I've automated content to go out on a regular basis. So the free version does not allow us to add branding, add our picture. Doesn't our company it allows you to add your picture, but it doesn't allow you to create your own brand, like your own color schemes, mm -hmm. things like that, or create it. templates. The paid service does, but for $112 a year, it's not too bad. And then yeah, you get all the extra bells and whistles. Like your picture, your name, so on and so forth, even if you choose a free version. Exactly. So I can create flyers, postcards, things mm -hmm. like that, but I'm limited to stock images and photos and, and things like that. So the information is automatically updated. Yep, every month. So I just got to go into RPR, drag it on top of the flyer, and I'll send it out. So if I didn't, if I created this, I'd save it as a template. Mm -hmm. And then all I got to do is just substitute out one, one or two photos, right? One chart for another chart each and every month. So you would embed that into your CRM when things are going out. Yep. To your client list. You can probably do that too. Because when you're doing your CRM, you set up a, say, a weekly or monthly mm -hmm. mailer to your clients, maybe a buyer side, the investor side, a seller side. And now all of a sudden, you got all these things. Can you make, can you automate that? The interaction between the CRM possibly and the Canva? I don't know. I think okay. with certain, certain ones, you might be able mm -hmm. to send it over to. Um, but I know for the share feature, it's usually social media mm -hmm. platforms. So you could set up individual schedules for X, Facebook, Twitter, yeah. Instagram. So, And the people on Facebook, for example, that would be distributed to, how do you determine that? Uh, your friends list, if it's going to your Facebook business page, which nine times out of 10, something like this is, mm -hmm. it's to whoever, they, whoever has it. liked you plus who their friends are, plus who their friends are. Mm -hmm. So organic reach is pretty easy, but what's nice is on a Facebook business page, you could then boost the posts. So you spend $30 to run a two week po boosted post, which now people see it in the upper right-hand corner of their Facebook page or their Instagram now sees your photo or this chart a little bit more. Maybe you have a call to action built in here, like a link to your website. Call me or contact me for more information. Click either the website or call me, right? So you can have a lot more um, call to action at that point. Which now all of a sudden, where am I generating my leads? Yeah. Facebook, Instagram. Maybe I'm getting five leads from Facebook, five leads from Instagram, 10 leads from Twitter. All of a sudden, where am I going to spend more of my money? Now I've got to get a team together. Terrible problems. Terrible problems at that point. Right? Versus somebody who's like, oh, I just don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Business is horrible. Right? I mean, I've heard, I've heard that from some of your colleagues, how horrible the business is. And when you ask them, well, what are you doing? Well, I'm doing everything. What is it that you're doing? And they can't tell you why, because they're not doing a thing. <laughs> Right? I hear it every day. I hear it every day at the counter at Orange County Realtors. Because I'm like, why aren't you doing this? Oh, I'm too old for door knocking. Eh, mail marketing really doesn't work. Have you done it? Yeah. When? 10 years ago. So you haven't done it since. Have you contacted your past clients? No, not really. I sent I don't want you all to be that. I sent one email. And they didn't, one postcard and it didn't work. So I'm not going to do that again. It's all about consistency. <clears throat> we have to be in front of them, right? How many of you have seen the same McDonald's commercial? Probably 50 times in like one week, right? 
And what do you all want to do? You all crave the Mc, the McRib, right? I remember when that sucker came out. That was so good, right? But when those advertisements come out, we all tend to do that, right? Funny enough, internet internet leads, about 90% of them today, all start searching on the internet first before making a purchase decision. 75% of them actually purchase things that they find on the internet from their research. Yep. Got one young lady saying me, right? How many of you did Amazon Prime Day and you look for everything that was advertised on Amazon Prime and now your Facebook and Instagram are all inundated with the things that you bought from, from Amazon? So shouldn't they be buying you and your services and what you have to offer? Put it out there, all right? Any questions on any of this? Do me a favor. Yes, sir. Just put up OC Fast Stats from sure. Orange County Realtors website. Sure. And the reason I'm asking he do that, I think whether you're an experienced agent or very new, your goal is to talk about your market's expertise. And if we look at OC Fast Stats, it is so easy to see the trend in the marketplace. So if we go to educate, excuse me, resources, and then business tools, and then OC Fast Stats, if you look at the map that comes up with Orange County, so you'll be logging into your account, your Orange County Realtors account. I know you have one. And then look, look at the map that comes up. Let's just click on Irvine, if you would, please. And then you, you want... can choose these areas. Let's just say we can say Woodbridge. Let's Woodbridge. just click on Woodbridge. You're farming in an area. You can see the exact change from month to month and year to year in regards to what's taking place. And so the stats are just amazing. Inventory is up. Days on market's down. Where is that leading? That's a good question. There's even a graph at the very bottom of this. So when you go, when you're speaking to somebody or you're going to be out door knocking, you're gonna be walking, you should read these reports for the area that you're in, whether it's just Orange County in general or for the specific area. Because even if you look at the graph on the bottom and there is a graph on the bottom, it shows you Orange County in comparison to the city you select or the cities that you've selected. So it's just amazing simple information. If you have not, if, if you've never listed a home, what can you talk about? The market itself. And everybody knows that you're an expert then because you know the trends. And I love this. It's like, you know, we've got the attached market in Irvine where you had 18 homes for sale in 2024 versus 19, but home prices went from a million twenty-five down to nine fifty-five, which I love that about a, an attached unit, right? We're in attached units like the starter homes for people. Yeah. So even then, that's still almost a million dollars. But homeowners are still getting 6% more of their asking price. But if we go down to the detached market, the detached market is crazy. Number one, it's got a third or a fourth of what the attached market's got with four properties versus what was that, 18? Yeah. And home prices went up from 1.7 last year to 2.1 this year, which is crazy. $500,000 in equity in just one year? In a year. So when buyers are asking you, what do you think is going to be taking place? You don't have to tell them you think you know what's going to happen. Well, look at the trend. <laughs> is there Flushing. anything that's going to change us? Look at the percent of the original list price. This is interesting. It tied into the, our, uh, the last report you're looking at. 103.3 percent in regards to the asking price that are properties listed. So I think if you use this information when you're talking to somebody, they're not going to necessarily question you about how many homes have you sold or how many have you listed. It's your knowledge of the marketplace itself. So this is a simple and easy to use report. And it's either a PDF document that I can go in and with a PDF editor brand it. I could use Canva brand this or make it a picture file and then use those templates that you're getting from RPR and put in some of these charts, mm -hmm. right? Maybe you do that newsletter template and now all of a sudden you can ask AI, okay, will you just write me a quick little newsletter post of about 500 words or less talking about the median sales price for attached units in Woodbridge, Irvine going from $1,025,000 to nine fifty-five. 
right? Where inventory went from nine, uh, 19 properties down to 18. Now all of a sudden you got a 500 word little newsletter post that you can then maybe make your own copy and paste into that newsletter and have the chart that backs it up with what you're seeing. Because everybody sees the market a little bit differently, right? But now we're using that AI platforms to help us generate the content that we need to be able to get it out there, right? Newsletters are great for MailChimp or Facebook or even just a quick email blast in our CRM. Because mm -hmm. I think, does your CRM do a newsletter blast? Yes. Or an email? Excellent. So now I take that newsletter template, put it into my CRM newsletter, and now e-blast it to my entire 750 contact list. That's growing as I get new, newer and better clients. Yes, ma'am. So what I would do is use that newsletter template in Canva. And then what I would do is I would ask ChatGPT to write the, a paragraph about these numbers, right? Which I'll then copy and paste or copy and rewrite a little bit to make my own into that newsletter. But then I will make this a picture file. So I could say screen capture on my computer, whoops. Come on. I love it when the mouse doesn't want to work. So I'm going to screen capture this as a picture file, which I then can copy, paste, download as a JPEG, and then move it over into Canva. So I can do that. And I do believe Canva has its own newsletter templates that you can access for free, right? And if you've never used Canva before, if you are in Canva, you can just type in real estate on the screen. Real estate, because I, you know, you've got all these things that you can make, all these different designs that you can choose from. But if you want something real estate specific, maybe where you start with a new project and then we'll go by category real estate. And see what real estate flyers. Whoops. Oh, those are my projects. My bad. Sorry. If you hit business of itself, it actually has real estate as one of the options. Yeah. So the real estate business, now all of a sudden I'll see all the templates for all the different things that I can make for real estate. And again, that's all included, right? Most of them you'll have to pay for, but there are some that are free. From a newsletter to a blog post to an Instagram picture, whatever. So you have a lot of tools at your disposal. Just using them. Just, Just using them. them. It's hard. It's hard. Sit down, conquer one thing. You got something for presentations. Great for your listing presentation or your buyer consultation presentation, right? You got uh, creating documents, <laughs> social media posts. They even have a video platform that it's really cool. It takes you less than two minutes to actually make a video using their platform. If you pay for it, there's an AI platform that will literally put the voice in the video for you. You just write the script. It's just 10, 14 bucks a month. 10, 14 bucks a month. I think that raised, but if you pay for the year, yeah. you're still paying the 112. So you're saving yourself money. So check it out. Any other questions? Any questions from Cyberland? No, a lot. A lot, right? I know it's drinking from the fire hose. It's tough enough. You have to learn the contracts tomorrow, but now you've got to learn about all your market. Right? We know the contracts. We're not <laughs> we know the contracts. That. We do. All right. Well, thank you, all, everybody. Tony, thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Actually, I do want to point out one thing about our office with the contracts. Mm -hmm. There, If you get your Orange County Realtors magazine, it talks about classes. Well, I think we go into more detail than any of these classes that we're going to offer. So you should attend those classes here. You know, we have him coming out. So he is their master instructor at Orange County Realtors. You don't have to go there. You don't have to sit online. It's much better attending a person. Mostly. Until you guys get tired of me. Never, <laughs> never. So I, I'd like to go back to Chappie, uh, GPT next time. I think okay. that that's very helpful so we can go through the whole process. Right. I can do that and I'll make sure I get you all the scripts again too. Okay, all fantastic. Uh, any other questions for Tony? No, thank you, Tony. Appreciate it. Thank it was you, a sir. pleasure. Thanks for coming, everybody. Thank you. You're in the meeting.
Tony, I have a quick question. Yes, sir. In the, um, in the search, is there any option to narrow down if the house has an ADU or not? Um, I have to look. Um, so the question is, can I look for properties that have attached dwelling units? So let's see. Let's look at our filters. Let's see, property type, single family. Oh, are you still online, Carlos? Yes. Oh, um, I do not. Yeah, there is a filter under the land lot section. Um, okay. I think because I was exited out of the meeting, I don't have access. So let's so change can, that. It's okay. So. so yeah, if you go under the more filters, right and then you scroll down under where it says land lot there's a choice that says standard land use if you click on the down arrow one of the choices will say adu um adu okay so it gives you abandoned site accessory dwelling unit adu agricultural aircraft airport related amusement park apartments uh appliance store arcades it's got a huge giant list going from A to Z. So that, that's in the MLS? That's in RPR. Oh, okay. Now, MLS does have a field for ADU that they, I think you all added a couple, a few months ago, mm -hmm. that if you go under, I think, external features, there should be a choice that indicates ex, um, access dwelling unit. But the agent has to mark that when they're entering yeah, the list. Yes, yeah. but most of them are beginning to if the property has it, not the potential, but does. Value there, yeah. there is some value there. Yeah. I think Carmenza had a question. Carmenza, did you have a question? No, not here. anymore. Thank you. Okay. He already answered it. Okay. 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 Yeah. Any other questions? Are you all excited about using RPR now? Yeah, it's amazing. Good. I know it's such an amazing tool. And what was your NAR dues this year? I think $158, I think, uh, this year, um, which is included in your in your dues renewal to access that tool for no extra cost plus all this other stuff is pretty good. And again, you can switch it over to the commercial side and access the same type of things. Just the reports are a little bit different. Right, because they'll talk about like um, um, demographically, like the people that are in the area, what you know, the type of traffic you're dealing with, other businesses locally, things like that. In those in those market updates, that's on the uh, market. That's, that's on the commercial side, right? But mm -hmm. it's good for us to know that too, yeah. even though around commercial. So that's good. So yeah. Well, Tony, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for coming, everybody. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you.